Hey it's fans, people in the webs, it's me, some of us you one back for another um Star Trek, the official Star Trek collection review, and this time we're doing issue number 104. Yes! Finally have them! It's taken bastard forever to for these fucking things to show up. Um and then in two days I got seven ships. So I got me Mirror Defiant, uh, my Ultimate Swarm ship, which is currently rendering, uh, the Janolan, uh, the Aventine, the Bear of Prey, the Kazon Raider, and the Combat Vessel. So, yes, expect a few reviews in the next few days. <laughs> so, yes, I'm finally got, I'm finally catching up now, which is good. So, we're doing issue 104, USS Janolan, NCC, um, one, uh, fucking hell, I can't even read it. 2010. Now it's weird that the Excelsior is 2000 and this is 10 after the Excelsior. Doesn't seem like an Excelsior class to me, does it, you? But there you go, that's staff it register numbers for you. Who knows why the why some of them particularly like Excelsior class um like jump wildly. I mean, they go from 2000 to uh um We go from like 2,000 to um, like 40,000, it's a bit weird. Anyway, not talking about Excelsior classes today, I'm talking about the Sydney class. So as usual, you get the Glossy Magazine, ship itself, but more on that in a little while. So let's get on, shall we? Specification, type Sydney, I think class, it's been established. Affiliation, just as Federation, it should be the United Federation of Planets Starfleet. Uh, launch, 23rd century, length, 235 metres, pretty big then. Uh, crew... Um, uh, 30 plus 200 passengers um, my top speed warp 6 and weaponry just phases um, yeah, it's a transport ship and we get a beautiful um, CG render of the uh, aft section there, it's beautiful I don't know. Um, so yeah USS Janolan, main body was rather boxy um, this helped maximise passenger carrying capacity it was capable of reaching speeds of up to warp 6 uh, and featured nacelles that were similar to those used on Constitution class ships and Miranda class ships. Um, the Janelle was transporting passengers to the Norpin 4 colony in 2294 when its warp draft failed due to an overload in one of its plasma conduits and then it was hit by a huge gravi gravimetric forces causing it, caused by a Dyson sphere. It crashed on the surface of the Nort the northern region of the other sphere and whereabouts remained a mystery for 75 years and um, we get another rather nice render of it on the front there which is really cool and then you know um we've got the dyson sphere holding the doors open for the enterprise to fly through at scotty um after an illustri illustrious career in Starfleet, Captain Montgomery Scott uh, was on his way to the retirement colony aboard the USS Janolan um, transport when he crashed into the Dyson Sphere. He could surely have died along with the rest of the crew if he hadn't came up with an ingenious idea of storing his energy energy pattern in a transporter. When he was finally rematerialized in 2369, he uh, found all of his engineering knowledge was outdated and felt useless until he helped rescue the Enterprise D from the Dyson Sphere. It's a good episode of Alex actually. Um, and then we've got a topographical view there, which is really, really cool, really nice, really nice. Um, along this encounter the USS Enterprise D, uh, Scotty revealed that he served with 11 starships during his Starfleet career. These range from freighters to cruisers to starships, including, of course, the USS Enterprise NCC-1701. Um, by the time Montgomery Scott was rematerialized aboard the General in 2369, he had spent 75 years in the transporter pattern buffer. And this meant he was now 147 years old. Pretty good. Uh, when Scott rematerialized on the General's transporter pad, uh, the transporter effect, rather than being the one used for the 23rd century films, was a recreation of the effect from the 60s series. Uh, the General was named after Australian tourist attraction, Janolan Coves, uh, in New South Wales, Star Trek writer uh, Naren Shankar and Ronald D. Moore visited the area where they, were, where they saw actress Susie Plaxon, who played Worf's um, in love interest, Kayla singing Sailor, uh, Amazing Grace. She also played the female Q, and she's Marshall's mother in How I Met Your Mother. Um, Designing the USS Janolan. Um, yeah, it, was, it started life as the transport shuttle from Star Trek VI. 
which there is a model of it now, um, one of the, the shuttle sets, which I still haven't got yet. Um, and I'm going to see if I can get it cheap. But if I don't buy it soon, it's going to rocket in price. So I need to get that because I've just announced another shuttle set. And I'm like, oh, come on, lads, give us a fucking break here. You know, spread it out a bit, you know. Um, yeah, because you can see um, the, the transport ships uh, on the Enterprise D saucer section there. Um, another version of the nacelles upside down, uh, as seen in Deep Space Nine a couple of times. Um, and then we've got a nice model of the ship there, all knackered up and damaged and looking old. And then a nice profile on James Doohan, um, who played Scotty, um, everybody's favourite Scottish engineer. Um, it's really nice, actually. Um, an interview con conducted in 2000, James Doohan revealed that he was responsible for the name and accent of the much-loved Scotty. Yeah, um, and he goes into sort of his acting career and, and goes into um, all the stuff he did for the original series. Because Scotty, uh, James Doohan... Um, Nine times out of ten, if it was a computer voice, Scotty did the voice. He does the voice for the uh, ISS Enterprise computer, the M5. Um, whenever there's a a, a a computer voice that isn't the, the Enterprise's computer, it's usually James Doohan doing the voice, which is really cool. Um, yeah, and of course you've got various images. You've got Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, um, which you've got to get it on Blu-ray because they've got the extended cut, and it just makes Scotty's character better because you find out that, spoilers, um, that um, Peter Preston is, in fact, his nephew, and he gets killed. Um, and you've got, of course, Relics there, which is a really good episode. And, of course, the, the most famous bit of Scotty ever did, picks up the mouth and goes, Hello, computer! Yeah. Um, and then we've got on screen... First appearance, uh, Relic, well, the, yeah, I think Relics, yeah. Uh, designed by John Goodison, Bill George, and Greg Jinn. Um, the cost of recreating the 1960s bridge for the Star Trek Next Generation episode Relics proved, almost proved prohibitive. It was suggested that they could use the bridge from Star Trek, from the Enterprise 1701A, but that had already been built for the film Star Trek 60 in Discovery Country. But writer Ronald D. Moore uh, vetoed the idea. Instead, to save money, by only partially building the original series bridge and filled with the rest using footage from deserted bridge taken from this side of paradise. Yeah, because the bit they built was... The the bit they actually built was um, the, tr the table lift door and this console here, which is Scotty's engineering console. And... Captain's chair and the Conan up station. They're the only bits that's in because um, Picard sits there and they have a drink because it's a really it's a really touching episode actually. It's one of my favourites. Uh, a scene from Relics in which Scotty visits Ten Forward. Data pulls a bottle of alcohol from behind the bar, saying it's green. Echoes the line Scotty is from the original series episode by any other name. That's a really good episode. Captain Picard identifies the bottle as Aldebaran whiskey. Um, a Dyson Sphere was a real theory postulated by phys physicist uh, Freeman Dyson in 1960. He wrote a paper on the Science, uh, science Journal in which a, said an advanced civilization might completely surround the star with an artificial structure in order to maximise um, and capture the star's energy. Yeah. Um, so there you go. Uh, we've got another top view of it on the back there. Now, I want to just, before I get into the model, about the Dyson Sphere... Um, they scientists have actually th actually think they may have discovered one because there's a planet, um, an extrasolar planet. Um, let's put it in here. Yeah. Real Dyson sphere. Um, because there's a planet um, orbiting, and I forget the star. Uh, I'm just going to Google it for you now. Um, and they um, they said. Uh, yeah, they've just found a second Dyson Sphere, apparently. Um, where is it? Oh, yeah. Uh, when astronomers discovered a strange pattern of light near the distant star called KIC um, 8462852 back in October, it was like nothing they had ever seen before. So, yeah, there is potentially a real Di two real Dyson Spheres out there now. So, you know, there you go. Anyway, I just wanted to uh, just put that in. Now, onto the model itself. And here we are. It's very nice. It's a transport ship, so you can't really um, say anything. It is, it's 
packed with detail on the bottom, but none of it's painted. I feel a bit disappointed there. I mean, a couple of things that could have been, you know, picked out, you know, a few panels here, grey there, black there, you know what I mean? There's no plastic insert for the um, impulse engine, which I'm assuming is that. It's not even coloured. Um, it's got a nice Janolan name on the back there. Um, we've got the nice nacelles. Actually, these are the best looking nacelles I've done of the 23rd century era. Still missing the cross shape on the front there. Um, it's really, really nice, except, it's got a real nice register number, except, as you can see, there's a large splosh of glue right over the register number. I've called Eagle Moss and they are sending me out a replacement. That is that is a quality control issue and not part of the model. Um, the join lines are seamless, apart from here, um, but you know, it's not a bad thing. Um, but yeah, overall, I think it's a really nice ship. You've got some pennants there, you've got some uh, nice detailing with the bridge and stuff, the impulse uh, manifold there, unless these are the impulse engines. Uh, what does it say in the, uh, the magazine? Actually, let's have a look. Um... No, the impulse engines. No, these are the impulse engines. These these two protuberances here make sense with these big engine blocks there, it, but they should have been painted uh, red. Uh, although red sharpie to the rescue. Um, I can practice on this while I get my replacement, which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, you've got some nice register number there. Although my camera, because I'm using me I'm using my phone camera, isn't going to pick that out. But it does say NCC 2010, United Federation of Planets. You've got the Starfleet pennants here, which have, it's always bugged me that that the Starfleet pennants are up there. Because when you do that, you can't see them. I'd have put them here, you know. Um, I'd have put them along the side there. Or even across the bottom, especially on this bit, I'd have put a pennant there as well. But that's just me. Um, and I've also put some more names and register numbers on it, because you've only got a Janolan there, um, Janolan on the front, register number. And on the bottom, I'd have put, you know, NCC 2010. Um, sorry, my fingernails are real dirty at the minute. Sorry, I have to cut this a bit out. There you go, because real long, my fingernails grow real quick. Um, so, yeah, I mean, overall... It's a nice ship. I really do like it, apart from the, the horrible glue splodge on it. Um, but, you know, it's one of the, again, it's one of those ships that I never thought I'd see in this collection. Um, and it's nice to have an extra 23rd century ship as well, because, you know, ships from this area is very few and far between. I mean, the only ones we ever see in canon are um, the Constitution Refit, the Miranda class... Excelsior class, Excelsior refit, the Janolan, um, who else, what else do we see, uh, the Oberth class, and that's it, that's your lot, you know, um, because we don't even see any shuttlecraft in the movies, really, in the original series movies, um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, it's, it's, it's a testament to the model makers, to take an existing model, like the command shuttle from Star Trek 6, and add a few bits and what they're called greeblies, they're called greeblies in the business, where they just make it look like, you know, engine parts and stuff like that. Um, and what they usually do is get model kits of tank, army tanks and stuff like that, uh, battleships, and just take it, take it all out and use bits and pieces. Even use the sprue as well, they use the bits of the sprue to make pipes and stuff like that, which is really cool. Um, you know, model, see that kind of model making is, is, they just don't do it anymore, it's all CG. And sometimes a model is so much better. You know, when they build a miniature like this, you can light it properly, you can do stuff to it, set it on fire, actually physically blow it up, you know, uh, put explosives in it and blow it up. And, you know, it just that's that's a missing part of, you know, cinema, uh, cinematography these days. And it's, it needs to be brought back. Um, because I do believe the last ship model that was built for the Star Trek was the Enterprise E back in 1996 because the Enterprise E that appears in um, in um, Insurrection CG so you know and, that, and the Enterprise D Max the last full size model built which is a shame which is a big shame so yeah um, I really do like this ship it's a really nice um, addition to um, Starfleet ships again one I didn't think I'd ever see 
Um, yeah, I am waiting for me replacement because that that is irritating me. As soon as I got it out of the packet, I was like, oh, you fuckers, you know. Um, cause I've been waiting so long for this to get this fucking thing in my hand, but you know. But other than that, I mean, it is lacking a few details here and there, but that's how it appears on screen. I mean, you can see all these Windows details in, inside of the hole there, which are really nice. And then finally, we've got proper nacelles. Um, but it's just really good. And the the, the moulded detail on the bottom is excellent, just if if a bit lacking in colour. Um, you know, uh, the impulse engines are a big, big thing. You know, they could have coloured those in, but give us plastic. It seems that they, they, they are stopping doing the plastic parts now, which is kind of... Mm. So, yeah, anyway, yeah, so that's me. That's the Janolan. Um, oh, yeah, a big part of it, which I always do. Um, got the stand, as usual, and it says USS Janolan, NGC 2010, and I've noticed that these are getting more and more cockeyed. Um, and you get the connector like so, and it just connects... Thusly, and it's cool, not as secure as I'd like it on there, to be honest. Um, and then we connect it to the stand, thus, and we have a Janolan. It's pretty cool. Um, so that's me, that's the Janolan. Um, and I'll catch you all later, bye for now. Oh, please like, share and subscribe, hit that notification bell. And if I can get my fucking Patreon thing sorted, I will put that in the bottom as well. Um, if anybody can help me with that, brilliant. Send us a PM on here. Um, because I don't know how to link it, it will not link, let me link the, my page to this, I don't know why, I can't, I can't seem to crack it, so if anybody can help me, brilliant, so, anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all later, bye for now. A little amendment to my video of the Janolan, um, I put the red sharpie to use, and I coloured in the impulse engines, and it looks a little bit better, it really does, like I say, it, this is a test bed for when I get a replacement, but it actually looks really good. So, yeah, I just thought I'd put that in there for you. Um, and I'll catch you all later again. Bye for now.